I was working as a park ranger when it happened to me. Other than me, there was a Navajo my age also working. Out job was to look after the horses and campers, make food, keep the site clean for the next set of campers, etc. The company we worked for had a set of emergency rifle sets up in the trailer we used, along with two guard dogs. One night after a long trail ride we had gotten back to camp only to discover there was a single coyote patrolling it. We watched it from a distance before it saw us and scurried off. I don't know why, by my Navajo friend and I had this really bad feeling after seeing it. The other workers didn't seem bothered, but they weren't the ones who had to live in the site 24-7. Maybe it was just nerves, but both of us had this feeling of being watched the entire evening. So eventually night comes and we all fall asleep. We wake to a banging on our door and a someone wailing outside. We get up to investigate. Navajo friend goes and checks the blinds and sees it's the campers, so he lets them in. They come inside and they are terrified. They tell us that one of the girls had heard what sounded like her friend outside hurt, only to step on her as she was making her way out of the tent. That's when the wailing began, which woke all of them up. It had apparently gone on for 20 or so minutes before they had come to wake us up. So we as they're telling us this, we hear it stop, only to start back up in a different spot much closer to the camping site. At this time, we notice that the dogs with us are bristling. So, both of us being not very brave, we take down the rifles and exit the trailer with the dogs and make our way to the middle of the camp. From here, you could tell the sound was coming from just beyond the edge of the camp, where the area was pitch black. We gather some of the wood sitting next to us and start the fire back up and that's when it gets bad. I have never been more terrified in my life. As soon as the wood catches, from all around us the wailing starts up. The dogs just stand next to us and start growing really hard. I had absolutely no idea what was going on. So I chambered a round into my rifle, in which my friend follows suit. After that it goes dead quite. I mean, dead, like nothing was being heard. I don't know if it was from how scared I was or what, but the next thing I know, I zhu these my name calling out from the dark to my left. I admit that at that moment, I pissed my pants. It was and still is the most terrifying moment of my life. I look at my friend and he has wide eyes and his face is pale. He's looking between me and where my name came from just as terrified as I was, if not more. We both back up closer to the campfire before he takes one of the boring branches and hurls it towards the name calling spot. We hear a hidden and see something scurry away only to have the dog start barking right then. If there was anything left in my bladder at that point, it had come out. I look at my friend until he points at something making its way slowly towards us. He points his rifle and fires at hit, hitting whatever it was. After the initial shot, we kinda went crazy, firing at whatever made a sound in the brush. So, we stay outside of the trailer for the rest of the night until the other workers come up. They see us both tired, still clutching the rifles and ask what happened. We go over everything and they go to investigate. After a little while, they come back with two coyote bodies. Apparently, what had happened was the current set of campers had brought a large amount of meat to grill with, but hadn't thought to properly seal the containers, attracting the coyote pack. You had had some fantastical things going through my brain, ranging from skinwalkers to ghosts, so to see the actual creature causing it was actually more terrifying than anything else. Park Ranger here, hope I'm not too late to the game and someone can enjoy this. There's plenty of odd things I experienced in deep woods, but the scariest thing I've encountered tired was working at a national wildlife refuge that was formerly US Army Lab soldier site. 
There was about 10 years worth of cleanup of random things like barbed wire barricades before it opened to the public in the early 2000s. If you're unfamiliar with the National Wildlife Refuge System, you're not allowed to leave the trails. Well, as a ranger I often need to. One time when I get deep into the woods a considerable distance from any trail I see a bunch of figures in the distance and my stomach drops. Could they be hunters? Are they armed? I wait and they don't move. I announce myself and proceed on the figures. There were about six badly burnt mannequins in military uniforms. Just standing there. It was a weird thing to stumble upon alone and I felt shivers. Later I dug deeper into the matter and found out that they were part of flame retardant fabric tests. Go figure, that's just one, I found a half-eaten person, coyotes, and busted up a crackhead 4th of July party too. Last year I spent two months in the winds of Wyoming with a park ranger leadership training group. On the morning of our second day, my bowel movements were telling me it was time to take a dump. I am a devout follower of the leave no trace principle, and you should be too, which has certain stipulations regarding one doing their business. As part of this, you need to be a minimum of 100 feet away from all water sources, trails, and campsites. I gathered my trowel and bear spray and set out to do number two. I went what I figured to be 100 feet and realized that my campsite and group mates were still in plain view through the leafless foliage so I decided to continue on to find some privacy. After some 100 yards or so, I was well hidden from camp and began thrusting my trowel into the ground to dig my foxhole. After two quick strikes, it became clear that just under the bed of the forest was a layer of rock so I decided to keep searching for another spot. I didn't want to go any further from camp so I headed back in the direction I thought camp was. At some point, I must have gotten turned around and I realized this after a few minutes of walking and not recognizing any of the landmarks which I had noticed on my way out from camp. This was fine, as I had found myself without my bearings plenty of times before and was always able to make it back to trail or camp or wherever. I gave the shout signal which my group had established before we set out to use as a way to locate one another. My shout was returned by the deafening silence of the forest. At this point, I should have sat down to collect myself before making any sort of rash decision. That was a huge mistake. I decided that I would go back in the direction I had just come from and I would be able to get my bearings from there. I did so and soon accepted that I was truly lost. I had no idea how far I was from the group. I had absolutely no sense of direction and began to freak. Without thinking, I just started in a panic-induced jog in whatever direction I was facing. I was hyperventilating and could feel the tears ducks start to activate. This went on for nearly seven hours with intermittent breaks before I sat down in a marshy kind of area with reeds and heard the familiar silence of the forest. Only, the silence was soon interrupted by what I made out to be footsteps and the rustling of the brush. I stood up to see the upper half of a trail runner who had decided to run off trail. I called but he couldn't hear me so I took off in a dead sprint towards him, finally getting his attention. He stopped and I approached him, quickly explaining my situation. I told him the campsite my group was at when I left and he just kind of stared at me. Are you sure that is where you were? He said to me. I was sure. He didn't believe me because I had ended up almost 10 miles away from anyone, completely alone in one of the vastest expanses of wilderness in the continental US. He guided me back to the trail and sent me on my way. I made it back to camp much to the relief of my two instructors who quickly sat phone their superiors to let them know I had been located. A full-scale SAR operation was about a half hour from commencing when I returned. 
That was the scariest day of my life and I care not to imagine what would have become of me had that trail runner not been running through that particular marshland out of the hundreds of square miles and thousands of routes he could have taken. If you're out there, kind stranger, thank you. Desert Park Ranger here. First story. Volunteers at one of my parks called us to report a still smoldering slash smoking car in one of our remote campsites. It was normal for stole cars to get abandoned and burned. We went to look, gawked a couple minutes while waiting for the fire department. After a couple minutes standing there it became very apparent there was a body in the front seat. After an additional look around, food wrappers, rope, and numerous other strange items were found. It seems like whomever was in the front seat had been bound and shot. Police came and cleaned it up, didn't find any answers. We refer to that as the haunted site now, it is the most popular in that tiny park. Second story. One of our cubicle farm chiefs got a call from a guy threatening to kill himself, he said he had a lot of guns and was going to end it then gave a location close to our park. Two of my co-workers got sent out to investigate. By the time they got there another rangering entity had found the scene first, they told my co-workers to leave before there was a ton of complicated paperwork they'd have to do. The guy had shot himself, semi-successfully, then tried to walk for help. Large cleanup scene. Felt bad for the responding park ranger, she wasn't with us but had just dealt with her husband, another ranger, killing himself the month before. She also found his body. Third story. By far the scariest thing I ran into though, I had just moved out there and was taking care of two parks by myself, both closed. These parks are about 30 miles from the nearest occupied houses and, even then, those couple of homes are usually empty in the summertime. I decided to hop in my car and drive to the darker park to take in a meteor shower and learn to play my banjo, because that is totally normal and not creepy at all. I am out there on a picnic table plucking away, terribly, under the stars and got this really uneasy feeling. My mind starts rattling off what ifs. Was that a shadow? What if someone shows up? What if someone is listening and starts singing this is the burned car park? What if they came back? As I am drowning in the silence with occasional string plucks to distract myself I hear muffled voices in the brush, quick mumbles then rustling. My heart dropped and my neck grew cold. There is no way this will be a normal interaction. My eyes struggle with the dark, scanning bushes trying to find shapes. The sounds grow closer and seem eerily high-pitched. Children? What the F? Park Ranger dies of heart attack, found three days later still clutching banjo will be a good headline. That is the day I learned that coyotes have the run of the desert and don't have to worry about being quiet. Three of them bound through the creosote bushes with a yip or two, pass me close. No F given. That is the last time I ever played the banjo there. I was working as a park ranger in a rainforest in Southeast Asia many years ago. One of the things we did was trap moths at night. You'd sit in front of a, a big white sheet with a lamp in front of it, powered by a generator and then periodically go and see what insects had been attracted to the sheet. Incidentally, the insects attracted frogs, which attracted snakes, which attracted bigger things. Due to the noise and light, the trap was about a mile away from camp, so you'd be there at 3 a.m., all alone in the middle of a jungle. One cloudy night there wasn't much happening on the 1 a.m. to 3 a.m. shift. I heard a rustle in the woods beside me. This wasn't unusual, but it was a bit bigger than I was used to hearing. The rustle got closer, and I started getting tense. It got closer still and I was starting to think that I was going to get eaten by a tiger. Suddenly a disembodied face broke out of the tree line, 
screaming in an unintelligible language. I practically shat myself, screamed a little, and the disembodied face disappeared back into the woods issuing high-pitched giggles. It was only after my heart slowed that I realized one of the local lumberjacks had given me a jump scare using a torch under their face for spooky lighting. I wasn't even mad. It was hilarious. I'm not a park ranger, but I've hiked parts of the Appalachian Trail. This occurred in West Virginia, I believe. Happened about eight years ago. Was hiking with a group, we spread out naturally based on hiking speed. I was in the middle-ish group of four of us, and one person had to stop to pull a tick off. Other two, one leader, stayed with them but I decided to hike on ahead and see if I could catch up with the lead group. The ad is extremely well marked with white blazes so I wasn't worried about getting lost. I knew the next landmark was an old logging road and sure enough, I hit it about half a mile later. I decided I should wait for the rest of the group to catch up, so while waiting I hiked a bit down the old overgrown road, which ran perpendicular to the trail. There was a low stone wall along one side and I was strolling along it, checking for anything interesting, like artifacts and stuff, when it was like I crossed an invisible line. All of a sudden, it was like sound cut off. No birds or insects called, when seconds ago there had been multiple birds singing. Even leaves on the trees around me stopped rustling. It was just this sudden, unnatural, deafening silence. For whatever reason, I took a few more hesitant steps forward until I hit this invisible wall. It was like suddenly I was barraged by this feeling. I can only describe it as intense unwelcome. As if I had entered the house of someone I knew hated me, but multiplied by about 100. All the hairs on my body stood straight up. I stopped dead in my tracks. The feeling was so strong that I didn't even want to turn my back. I couldn't see anything down the road, threatening or otherwise, that would give me this feeling, but I knew I had to leave immediately. I just knew I was not meant to be there and if I stayed something bad would happen. So I walked backward slowly, never turning away from the road and trying really hard not to even blink. Finally I crossed that invisible line again and I could hear the birds singing and the leaves rustling. I didn't turn around until I heard the leader I'd left earlier asking me if there was anything cool down the road. I was like, nope, let's keep going. Looking back I figure it was a bear or cougar just out of sight that my instincts managed to pick up on, but at the time. Damn, it just felt creepy and almost paranormal. I was hiking in the Adirondacks with my ex on a trail that was a loop around a lake with one trial head early spring so a lot of trail cleanup hadn't begun yet. We are walking about halfway to check out this waterfall and I hear this rumbling that sounds like an animal stomping the ground towards us. I then hear this bizarre rapidly increasing growl that sounds like what Hollywood uses for alien noises and book it. My boyfriend, X, tells me to hold up but I am crapping myself. I'm out of breath and refuse to go back the way we entered the trail. We have to march through this thick bog that was pulling our boots off to get through to the other side to exit the loop. We get to the car and I'm crying at this point. The previous day was spent vomiting from eating bad food. Next vacation we are going to a city. I moped. We had been to the Adirondacks for the past four vacations and honestly this experience beat me down. Years later I was listening to nature sounds on the internet and I hear that growl. A chill went up my spine, I learned that's a real thing. It was a mating call of a ruffed grouse bearing its wings on its chest. Yup. I freaked out because of a horny bird.
A few years ago my brother and I were camping in Colorado. He heard a twig snap somewhere nearby, and he wakes me up. We scan with our headlamps and see a huge pair of eyes staring at us through some willows. I figured it must be a bear, it kept staring at us for 5 minutes until we turned off the lights, we were going to move camp back towards some other groups. All of a sudden a massive moose comes charging out of the willows, luckily it veered off before it collided with our tent. Another time I was hiking a trail I hike regularly with my dog, but it was totally deserted because of some rain. She was ahead of me maybe 20 yards when she comes to a dead stop, and beelines it back down the trail, completely ignoring my calls. As I chase her I notice an unmistakable mountain lion print. I was hiking in a national forest with my wife and my dog. The first couple's miles of trail led to a waterfall and swimming hole so it was fairly well populated with people. We decided to hike past the waterfall which involved a bit of a climb, enough at least to keep most people from going past the waterfall. We hiked another mile or two without seeing a single person. This whole time my dog was having a great time, happy to be in the woods and happy to walk 30 miles if we let her. Suddenly. In a particularly dense part of the trail, she stopped suddenly and stared straight ahead. She absolutely would not move another inch forward. We stopped and listened but couldn't hear or see anything unusual. The dog, though, started whining and trying to pull us on the leash back up the trail towards the swimming hole. I had never before or since seen my dog act this way but I believe she was legitimately afraid of whatever was ahead of us. Maybe there was a bear on the trail, or a coyote, or maybe a serial killer was hiding in the woods. I'll never know, because we listened to our dog and decided to GTFO as fast as we could. Who knows, maybe we avoided some gruesome death deep in the woods. The most surreal experience I had was during an off-trail hike in the Rockies, Colorado. I was extremely depressed and spending a day away from an awful ex. I wasn't really sure what my plan was but I fell on my ass through ice into a shallow stream I was crossing and just said F it, I'm not going back to my car. Well just near the top of a steep hill I almost stepped on some sort of leg bone. I was like oh, that's cool. Until about three feet away I saw several more limb bones and most of a spine between a couple mounds. I didn't see fresh blood but was certain it was regular territory for something that could mess me up. I kinda froze and looked around me since I hadn't heard anything so far, so decided to get a few picks and then slowly left down the hill. About halfway down I turned back up the hill cause I figured I was overthinking it and I really didn't want to go home. About five steps back up and I definitely heard some animal walking around at the top of the hill and I didn't stick around to see it. I slipped in the water again on my way out. My husband and I were hiking in a state park on the east coast. It was midday during the work week, so we maybe encountered two other people the three hours we were out and about. The only sounds we heard were from ourselves, our dog and some bird slash animals. All of the sudden, I started hearing mild chanting. I asked my husband if he heard it too and he nodded but signaled for me to be quiet. My dog's ears were at full alert and the hair on his back was standing straight up. We continued walking and the noises turned into full-blown monk chanting. Think Halo Gregorian chant. It was clear as day. Like I was standing right next to a speaker. To make myself feel better, I convinced myself some teens were hiding down somewhere playing it on their phones. After five minutes of hearing it, it disappeared and we barely spoke a word the last three miles back. Still creeps me out.
was in Big Bend National Park about 20 years ago prepping for a backpacking series presentation for REI. Big Bend is the western portion of Texas that dips downward along the bend of the Rio Grande that forms the border with Mexico. It's mixed high desert and smaller mountains. Gorgeous place. Great history. I was hiking the area near Santa Elena Canyon, probably a couple of hours before sunset, to try and get pics for the presentation. This area of the park opens into a comparatively flat section of the basin where the river broadens and the wildlife tends to be more diverse and obvious there, hence there I was. I was several hundred meters away from my van which was parked in a designated lot at what passed for a trailhead at the time. As I approached the river basin near the mouth of the canyon I saw something really unusual. So unusual in fact that it took a few seconds for my brain to sort the puzzle. Something was moving on the other side of the river, and it was big. Man-sized, but low to the ground. The color of a deer maybe? And shuffling along. It looked, for first impression, to be a medium-sized white-tailed doe lying on its side and moving like a snake, but that's not a thing that happens so I moved a bit to improve my line of sight. It was a mountain lion. A big cat. A big cat. It was creeping along, low slung, hunting something that was probably no more than a stone's toss from where I was standing. I'd never seen one before and when the visual information finally parsed I think my blood froze. Then it looked at me. I'll probably never forget that bit. You could see that little calorie calculator turn on in its eyes. I've never been so thankful for a river in my life. Granted at this time, and maybe still, the river was very low due to drought and unauthorized slash unlawful irrigation practices upstream. And you could likely cross at several points at this location with minimal risk, but it was still quite broad and definitely looked the part of a potent water barrier. Death Kitty does a series of double takes, head shifting from me to whatever the prey location back and forth rapidly, said calorie counter and risk calculator trying to get a fix on this evening's menu. I die a little inside, maintain my facing and begin slowly and quietly moving away. Not sure if I wasn't worth it, if the river was too much of an X factor, or if the big un just really wasn't that into me, but no chase was given and after breaking line of sight, I was able to get back to the van just fine with no sign of pursuit and some mild tachycardia. That was the longest short walk I've ever taken. Later that night, I was parked off of the main park road in an area where big cats commonly hunted. I'll always remember being parked there, in the middle of nowhere, munching on slightly stale Oreos and a bottle of water, listening to the occasional growl or scream of a big cat peel out of the darkness and being thankful for my relatively fortunate position on the food chain. Also one night I hallucinated on NyQuil, a side effect I regularly experience with the quills, after getting a respiratory illness and woke up screaming. At a mountain. At 3 AM at the public campsite. Did the Tongarero circuit between two huts. The trail went along a ridge which was pretty barren. It was towards the end of the day and I was tired, going slower than I would have liked, but had tons of water, food, warm clothes etc. I was safe, just tired. The Tongarero crossing is stupid busy but the circuit is significantly less so, there were no other people about at all. The flags that marked the trail just stretched along the ridge in what seemed like forever. The terrain wasn't changing too much so I was just plodding along, wondering if I had somehow died and gone to purgatory without noticing. Here's another one. In southern British Columbia, hiking up to a lookout, near the top. Walking along all fine, no problems. Get to the top, begin walking back down. In a spot we had last been in 15 minutes ago was fresh cougar dung. We were all healthy adults, no children or dogs, 
So we didn't think the chances of us being attacked were high but they were also non-zero so we were pretty on edge heading back down the mountain. It's one thing knowing that you are in cougar country and you have to take precautions and another to know that there is a cougar pretty close to you, probably watching you. In Glasshouse Mountains, hiking with a friend. We're two women. Meet this guy at the summit, he strikes up a conversation but it doesn't take long before he starts making creepy comments about our bodies and being suggestive about two women traveling together. My friend turns to me and says that we should head back now, he says cool, where are we going next? I just point blank tell him to f off and never speak to us again. He goes to follow us down the trail and we both begin yelling at him. A muscular dude steps in and asks if there is a problem. We book it. Later that night, we're sitting next to our tent and out of sight when we hear some guy asking our camp neighbor if they've seen his friends, these two women. Our neighbor tells him no, we slink into the tent unnoticed, I guess he thinks no one is there and doesn't come onto our site. The next day we're doing another hike and strike up a conversation with a Swedish couple who tell us about this creepy dude who came around to their hostel the previous night looking for two women. He must have gone to every camp and hostel in the area, looking for us. No, thanks. Cool but scary was sitting around the campfire in Maine, hearing a huge crashing sound from the woods, booking it back to the van and peering out the front window just in time to see a huge male moose burst from the trees ran through the campsite and back into the woods on the other side. Rocky Mountains, about halfway through a hike, we hear a very loud, high-pitched scream. Thought it was a cougar and it sounded a long way off so didn't think too much of it, just kept our wits about us a bit more. A few minutes later, my friend starts laughing hysterically. I turn around, thinking WTF is so funny? And she's looking pretty spooked. Her laugh begins to come from all around us. Then my laugh. In the end, all four of us are being laughed at by our own voices from all around us. We're all freaking out a bit, thinking do we go back or press on? We were on a kind of secluded track and it had the option of joining up with a more popular one or keep on the secluded one a bit further ahead so we pushed on and took the more popular track. It was fine but we kept hearing that cougar slash maybe not cougar call and, whenever there were no other people on the track near us, we could faintly hear laughter. Me and three of my friends went biking on a trail that was closed for the night. We decided to head to this hidden lake we knew about, but it turns out they had paved up to it recently. Awesome. Everything was pretty dead quiet except for some frogs and the trees whistling. As we cross this new bridge over the edge of the lake over a stream, I start to hear laughing. I look at my friends and they hear it too. I asked them what the hell was going on and they had no idea either. All of the sudden, it sounded like everything got super loud, including the laughter and the sounds of the frogs. It suddenly sounded like thousands of them were croaking so we freaked out and booked it on our bikes. At one point, we were going uphill the way we came and it felt like someone lifted my tire and flipped my bike. I hopped back on and started looking around but couldn't see anyone. It still felt like I was being chased and I kicked it into third gear up that hill and pedaled as hard as I could. The laughter kind of stopped after about a half mile, but I didn't stop until we reached the end about, five, miles later. I ended up catching up to my friends near the end who were freaking out because they hadn't noticed I was gone until about five minutes before I pulled up to them. I've been back to that lake since, but never at night and it's pretty popular now. I was out hiking in the night with my friend Corey, 
and were passing through S Long Field. I'd been to the area before and it always made me feel uncomfortable. Suddenly there is whispering all around us, and above us. It's pitch black, no moon out. It wasn't English or any language I'd ever heard. I felt threatened and that we were being spoke of, and we may be in danger. But if we ran something would happen, and if I said anything, something would happen. So I just look over at my friend who's wide eyes and we make eye contact. We walk out without speaking a word after that. When we finally get out of that area, and we feel like we're safe because we're coming up to a road, I ask him if he heard anything weird, and he goes you heard IT too. We are thoroughly freaked out. Start walking faster to where there's lamp posts. We ended up finding a glow worm on our way out, which I'd never sensed before. And after that we felt safe for some reason. We carried the big with us for a while and then let it go when we got near the road. There was some stuff in those mountains. I was walking with my family in the woods above our house and our little dachshund puppy was sprinting up and down the trail between us having the time of her life. After a while she caught the scent of something and shot off the trail into the undergrowth. We called for her but her interest was fixed on something away from the path, through the undergrowth. After squeezing past some trees and bushes I followed her to a rocky overhang. She was barking and barking at something laying in the soft dirt. At first I thought it was a bundle of half-buried clothes, then I saw the patch of blonde hair sticking out the soil at one end and realized what I was looking at. There had been a lot of rain recently and it had washed some of the soil away from a recently dug shallow grave. Freaked out I grabbed my dog and backed up back to the trail. After a much faster hike home the rest of the morning was spent talking to the police then talking to homicide. I never found out what happened. I am no park ranger but I have spent my entire life in the Sonoran Desert. I grew up on Steve Irwin, Jeff Corwin, Jack Hanna, etc. I have always been infatuated with predator animals and I've been collecting fossils, bones, and teeth since I was under five years old. Some of my first memories as a kid are breaking the main water line under my house while digging a six by six hole in my backyard looking for arrowheads. Ever since I can remember I've been that kid and while I have no regrets it's led to some spooky stories. One time when I was eight my best friend and I wanted to go biking through a desert trail by his house but his father was upset with us, I don't remember why, so we were sneaking out. The night before we'd crept out with our bikes and propped them up against a mesquite tree just outside of his backyard wall before covering them. And then just as the sun started to set we went to hop the wall. I went over first and did it fast to avoid being spotted, but as I landed on my feet on the other side an insane chill went down my spine. Goosebumps on my neck, the back of my arms, all the way down to my calves. I didn't see it at first but something primal in the back of my mind knew I'd just misstepped. It had been raining and I felt the mud give way under my boots only to see that everywhere around me the ground was writhing with baby rattlesnakes. I managed to not step on any slash get bit but I still have nightmares about this. It felt really trippy as my brain processed that the ground was moving, and no I wasn't hallucinating. I screamed and his father had to come rescue me by hanging over the wall and picking me up by my shoulders. He was furious. Just a few years after this my friends and I found a huge part of Lake Roosevelt that had receded leaving these big tide pools filled with massive carp and catfish, some of them just as big as us. We were having a great time messing around and dragging fish out of the tide pools of death and throwing them back in the water but the whole place reeked, and there was death all around us. We all got pretty filthy and most of us took a beating from a fishtail that wound up throwing us back into the mud meaning none of our parents were willing to give us a ride back without cleaning us up. 
We continued to enjoy the scene while our parents theory crafted a way to get the mud off of us but right around this time I noticed some huge paw prints that seemed to be right in the middle of all of us that were so fresh the edges of the mud that found its way in between the toe pads was still curling into a settled position. My blood ran cold as I immediately recognized it as a mountain lion and looked around, realizing I must have missed something, which I had. 15 feet away there was a fully grown mountain lion eating the remains of a huge fish, staring directly at us. He must have literally walked behind us to get where he was going, and easily could have snatched one of us. Later when I was much older and in my late teens I was walking my dog at night on a very mellow trail near a golf course. I heard some coyote yips in the distance that night but nothing that alarmed a long-term Arizona desert rat until under the chain link came 20 plus coyotes all at once crossing the trail in front of me. My dog's hair went up like it was gel then he started growling and barking like an absolute mad lad until he realized how many there were at which point he got incredibly anxious and started whining at me. They kept their distance. But when I realized a second branch trapping me from behind I left the trail and ran through a residential area that I knew to de-escalate the situation. This was in the middle of Tucson, not the desert. I've been to the Amazon twice and have had some spooky jungle stuff happen. Okay so the place I stayed was Sani Lodge and I went both times with a bird research group, but they also do regular nature tourism there. Amazing place. It's run by the local community and is just straight up in the jungle. It's a please don't leave your cabin at night and look out for snakes because the nearest hospital is a helicopter ride away type place. The cabins have palm leaf thatched roofs and a big low windows with just bug screens and no glass, it would be too hot. You need to take a boat down the river to get to it because it's that isolated. It's all relatively recent because without ecotourism, the community's only other big income opportunity would be to sell their land to oil companies. All the hiking guides grew up in the jungle and know a ton. Anyway over the two trips I've experienced and heard about some spooky stuff. One of the guides told a story once about staying out in the jungle too late as a kid and it getting dark. It's literally pitch black under the trees at night and impossible to travel. Your eyes never adjust because there's just not enough light. Anyway he had to curl up between the roots of one of the huge trees and just wait it out in the pitch black until morning. Now apparently you can signal others by hitting the roots of those trees because it makes a very deep thumping. But you need to use a particular rhythm and should not do it at night because jaguars also communicate long distance that way and you wouldn't want to attract one. His parents were probably pretty happy when he came back alive in the morning. Speaking of jaguars, one time the guy who organized our trip told a story about when he went out at night with a guide friend to survey owls from the canopy tower, which is a big platform hundreds of feet up in one of the especially massive trees. They had the flashlights off and were playing an owl call when they started to smell something like really rancid cat urine. I know what they were talking about because I accidentally put my hand on some jaguar piss during a hike earlier in the trip. It is way worse than a cat. They turned on the light and there was a jaguar silently climbing onto the platform. It ran away when they shined the light at it. I had no idea jaguars could climb like that because this tree is the size of an actual skyscraper. Apparently it used the vines that go all the way down, which are the size of small trees themselves. The nights were pretty spooky for me in particular. There's no glass on the huge windows and you can hear all the jungle noises as if you're sleeping outside. I was also so tired from hiking that I'd pass out immediately and wouldn't be fully awake even if something was happening. For example my lodge mate had to deal with a tarantula on her own while I literally couldn't keep my eyes open despite there being a tarantula in our room. We would regularly experience something or interact with each other during the night, only to wake up and ask each other if it actually happened. One night. I woke up in a cold sweat and was absolutely terrified for no reason. Like my heart was pounding out of my chest and I was frozen like a wild animal. 
I said something to my roommate like are you there and she responded yes. I went back to sleep and in the morning she told me she heard something sniffing at the door to our lodge after I fell back asleep. Okay my final story is about the frogs. There's this type of giant bullfrog that lives in the area. They are supposedly more than a foot long when full grown, not including legs, and have a deep voice. I saw one that was bigger than any bullfrog I'd seen in the States and when I pointed it out, the guide said ah, a juvenile. Anyway the voices of these things are scary. They have such a low voice that from a distance they sound like a group of men having a hushed conversation. At night I would often wake up assuming it wasn't that late because I could still hear people talking, but then checking my phone and realizing it was far too late for those to be people. If I listened close enough I would be able to pick out a few notes that were clearly frog, but without concentrating they sounded exactly like people. Another night it was raining and I started hearing a soft thumping noise from the boardwalk outside. I assumed it was fruit falling at first but I after a while I realized it was far to rhythmic. It sounded exactly like someone walking slowly toward our cabin. Terrifying. It got closer and closer until it finally stopped abruptly. I was scared but also still half asleep so I must have fallen asleep again. In the morning I asked a guide about it and he said the bullfrogs use the boardwalks when it rains. I got one from my cousin, Steve, that I'd like to share. Keep in mind that I might be missing a few details and Steve could just be BSing me but he seemed awfully serious when he told me. Steve is an outdoorsy person, likes to camp and hike and stuff. He never gave me specifics on where he was with this story so it could be anywhere in a forested area in the wilderness. He said it was late September, early October, Something like that and this was in 2004 I think. Steve said he set up a little campsite in a small clearing no bigger than like a large living room. The first night everything went fine, no troubles at all. But that afternoon, quite a while after head woken back up, he felt oddly drawn to somewhere off in the distance in the forest. He said he was like on autopilot and wasn't fully aware of what he was doing. Steve said he wasn't too far away from the campsite into the trees when he noticed what looked like a toppled over grave. That's how he described it at least, a rectangular slab of stone. But he said it was weirdly out of place and it definitely didn't belong there. He said it looked polished, sort of glossy and reflective. There was no writing or scrawling on it, it was smooth and plain. But despite it sitting on a pile of dead leaves, there was no forest debris on it. No twigs, fallen leaves or even moss on it at all. This was very unusual especially considering to his knowledge there was nobody around for miles but it looked like ITD been placed there very recently. At that moment, Steve said that he felt as though he had been picked up and dropped randomly somewhere on earth and had zero clue as to where he was. He said even though he could clearly make out the red canvas or nylon or whatever of his tent maybe 25 feet or so behind him, he said he was just utterly confused and totally unfamiliar with his surroundings. Then he said that two things happened very quickly. First, he felt an ice cold wave of air hit him. Like a cold wind on a frigid winter day despite it being relatively warm for early autumn and there was no wine present. The branches on the trees hadn't moved and the leaves on the ground didn't budge at all. Second, he heard what sounded like a loud, deafening clap, like someone clapped their hands just once, really hard and it echoed across the valley. Next thing he knew, the sun is already dipping below the horizon and it's pretty dark in the woods. Only a split second earlier it had been about 3.30 in the afternoon. Now it was closer to 8 at night in the blink of an eye. Steve said he did not see the stone on the ground anywhere and he booked it back to his tent, scared out of his mind. According to him, 
It wouldn't be a good idea to pack everything up right at dusk and try to make his way back to civilization during the night so he'd have to wait until morning to do so. Now I'd love to say that this was some creepy alien story like he saw UFOs flying overhead or there was like a skinwalker or Wendigo or something because those are creepy but that was about it. Except for one other thing. He said he barely slept that entire night, all the while he heard a seriously creepy sound not far from the tent. Steve said it sounded like someone snoring and it might simply just been a sleeping animal like a bear or mountain lion. Not too sure if they snore but I'm guessing they do. Anyway, he said he waited a little bit after dawn broke until it was fully light out. He packed up his stuff and got out of there, with the feeling he was being watched the entire time until he left the woods. I do night audit at a very old and very large hotel where it's usually just me and a security guard overnight. This is a couple months into me being here and there was another guy here with me that night. So he, the SO, also male, and myself all have a radio, and it's about 3 in the morning when we had to call security for something. Coworker and I were right next to each other, but there was no answer from the other end. Called two or three more times and didn't get anything back so we gave up about the time he came around the corner saying his radio was dead. While both of us are within 8 feet of each other, co-worker and I's radio comes back with a young female voice saying hello? So, requested a different posting, and I don't think we've ever actually talked about it. There is also a lot of other, interesting, things that happen overnight that me and the other night auditor just kind of accept. While hiking yesterday, me and four other friends were at a split in the trail and consulting a picture of the trail guide on the phone to make sure we went the right way. We were practicing carrying backpacking packs with us, and one of my friends was getting tired so she and another dude were near the back. She start to hear a creaky violin sound start playing. She looks back and sprints ahead leaving the other guy in the dust. He catches up and our group moves to the sides of the path for this new visitor. He was an older guy I'm told who had a hoodie on and the hood up and the strings pulled real tight so you could barely see his face, I actually didn't even see his face. He was running, while hunchbacked, while playing the violin, while holding it straight up and down, and the sound it played was on tune but still creaky sounding. He ended up running through one split of the path and my group luckily was going on the other split of the path. And we didn't see him again. I work on a USFS trail crew and the scariest thing I've ever experienced was just a night in the backcountry. We had a big 50,000 acre fire the year before. So we were out clearing trail with crosscuts in the wilderness area in our district and we made it to night three of our trip. Had crazy strong winds, like upwards of 40 miles per hour gusts, and could hear trees crashing down all over. I was in a safe spot with zero burned trees down, but some of the folks on my crew were being pretty darn stupid and set their tents up next to some pretty suspect trees. Nothing ended up happening to anything close to us, but I was up all night long wondering and waiting for anything to happen. I live in a valley on the edge of the city and the hills around me were used as commercial plantations for growing pine trees. I wasn't very far from my home but the trees and undergrowth were thick enough that I couldn't see the rest of the valley. So it had this eerie feeling to it. I quite liked the quiet and listening to the sound of the wind through the pines. Most of them were destroyed in a storm in Easter 2013. Quite surreal watching 60 feet pine trees being snapped in half a dozen or so at a time. I would do a circuit through them that would take me about an hour and a half to two hours to complete, although at a pinch I could do it in an hour. 
The scariest thing I experienced would have been when a dairy cow came crashing through the underbrush in front of me. A cow might not sound like the worst thing that could happen, but I heard they can be pretty aggressive and I wouldn't want to be on the receiving end of one if it charged. The creepiest things I experienced came before and after the storm. On more than one occasion I had this feeling that I was being watched in the forest. I would stop and listen for a few minutes, and see nor hear anything. It would disappear after a short while. Another occasion I found a dead pig next to a dirt road on the edge of the forest. Curled up like a dog or cat. After the storm there were few patches of thick undergrowth that remained. Although while walking through one of them my dog kept staring up the hill beside me and would whimper. She'd also walk right beside me, which was unusual as she was always a minimum of 5 or 6 meters ahead on the track off her lead. For what it's worth I came across a large wooden crate similar to the ones hunters and farmers have on the back of their utes to keep dogs in atop a flat part of a dirt road on the opposite side of the valley. There were a couple of tied up plastic bags next to it and it smelled of rotting flesh. Disappeared after a few days. So I live near the ghost town of Alvira, Pennsylvania. Back during World War II, the government claimed eminent domain and booted everyone out, built a munitions slash bomb factory. Fast forward to now. A chunk of the land was given back to the community as state game land, a portion of it hosts a federal prison, and a bunch of it sits unused by the government. The game lands contain the remains of the town, just foundations and wells at this point, and a bunch of bunkers. These bunkers are concrete igloo-like structures with a big metal door on one side, once used to store explosives, now used for teens to get drunk and do drugs. Over time they have become covered in dirt and plant growth so you might mistake it for a hill if you didn't see the door. There are local rumors that devil worshippers hang out in the game lands and have strange rituals in the woods and in some of the more out of the way bunkers. I never believed these because every town has a place with devil worshipper rumors, but last year my friend claimed it was true. He said his parents were hunting once and saw a group of people in robes around a fire chanting, as a figure wearing a deer head mask stood in the center. He also said that one time while he and his dad were hunting he heard the chanting slash singing and saw the smoke. This particular friend is a real straight shooter and I wouldn't think him the type to make stuff up, so I'm tempted to believe him. Now for my own experience. When I was in high school, myself and about five friends were all having an all-nighter at my house in the summer playing manhunt in the woods, shooting each other with airsoft guns, the usual. At night we all went out with flashlights in the woods because of course we did. The woods around my house are the same woods as the game lands, and there are only two properties between mine and the game lands. We saw an orange light through the woods that I was pretty sure there wasn't a house there. My friend said it was the devil worshippers and started trying to freak us out. I didn't believe in them then, and even if I did I knew it wasn't that, but I played along to scare everyone. We went on a quest to find the devil worshippers and went toward the light. We left the path and began bushwhacking in the dark, now quite far from the house. We heard my neighbor's dog in the distance barking its head off, probably at us, but then it got really intense, and made a horrifying noise no dog should make, and stopped. I've seen the dog since then so it didn't die, we were a bit taken aback by the noise so we all stopped and listened. In the dark, from just beyond the reach of our lights, we heard footsteps. Bipedal sounding footsteps. Not a squirrel in the brush, or a deer crashing through bushes, but a clear crunch, of the leaves. At that point we all decided to head back. My friend and I wanted to keep going but we didn't want to do it alone, so we conceded. We were all sleeping in the guest apartment over the garage, which is a separate building from the house. 
It has one of those 70s accordion style doors halfway up the stairs separating the upstairs area from the hallway and bathroom downstairs. Later that night, well after midnight, when we were settled in and starting to doze off, those of us who were still awake heard something brushing against the door from the other side. It was a flimsy plastic slash linoleum thing so it was moving as something bumped it, and we could hear the noise clearly. I gathered up the courage to say out loud does anyone else hear something bumping the door? I get a few shaky yeses from around the room. Is anyone going to get up and check it out? Several nopes from the others, and I sure as hell wasn't going to do it. It went away after a few moments, and we eventually fell asleep somehow. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe for daily stories. We at Horror Den of Misfits really enjoy this, and your support would be appreciated.